Taipei, city of azaleas, capital of the Republic of China, or as most of the world calls it, Taiwan. A city in a country with a complex past and present. Originally inhabited by indigenous people, later colonized by the Dutch, the Spanish, and the Japanese, and now home to the government that once ruled mainly in China. A city that our family has wanted to go to for a while. Now we get the chance to spend eight days here, learning about the past, the present, and the future. Tasting how the multicultural background creates a culinary palette unlike any other. The solemn memorials and the vibrant night markets, the city chaos and the tranquil nature, all come together to make this city, Taipei, what it is. This is our eight-day world school adventure in Taipei, a journey that shows you how family travel can be educational, exciting, and yes, comfortably affordable. Please remain seated with your seatbelts fastened onto the fast seatbelt signs have been switched off. We just made it to Taipei. We just need to go get our pocket Wi-Fi and find our driver, and we'll get out of the airport and go kind of do some first impressions of where we're staying. All right, so right over here, Edison Tours, they do free half day tours. So if you have a layover, seven to 24 hour layover, then come to that counter and do a free tour of the city. We are getting a airport transfer to our hotel and also back to the airport on the 16th when we leave from Edison. Tomorrow, we're doing a full day tour with them. So come check it out. Yeah, so we did look around at a lot of the different companies and we found this company and they were actually one of the cheapest. We'll leave the link in the description and in the PDF and you can uh, go to their website and quote what it's gonna be. Okay, first impressions. It's incredible. I didn't know how mountainous it was, but the buildings are just so dense and so huge, just built up through the mountains. It's incredible. I love it. After a fairly short drive, we arrived in our Airbnb in the Ximending area. However, getting in proved more challenging than it really should have. Great, we're trying to get into our room. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. We can't get the lock to work. And then we locked out. And we locked out for 30 minutes. <laughs> a stubborn keypad left us locked out for a few minutes, but we eventually made it inside. There's a school of thought that says, don't book too nice of an accommodation in a place because you'll never want to go out and explore. So we, uh, you can get the try that out. So. Home sweet home for the next week. Let's get settled and start exploring. With our home base established, it's time to hit the streets of Taipei. But first, a quick pit stop. The girls are hungry after our journey, so we make a beeline for the nearest family mart. As we step inside, we can't help but notice a very mm, powerful aroma. Tea eggs. Hard boiled eggs simmering away in tea. It's a smell we never quite acquired a taste for. We grab some quick bites to tide us over. It's good, girls. Refueled, we set out to explore our neighborhood. We're staying in the Ximending area, often called the Harajuku of Taipei. It's a vibrant area popular with the younger crowd. What is it? It's a witch cafe. We walk around for a bit, and as evening approaches, our stomachs are rumbling again. Luckily, we don't have far to venture for one of Taiwan's most famous dishes. Right next door to our Airbnb is Fuhong Beef Noodles, a 24-hour spot that seems to always have a crowd. The setup is simple. They tell you where to sit, you order, and you pay when the food arrives. That's so good. I want to go. That was the lens. Amazing. <laughs> it really is. Yes. And just like that, our first day in Taipei comes to a close. Tomorrow, we'll dive deeper into what Taipei has to offer. As well as the running expense total we show on screen anytime we spend money, I'll show our daily expense total at the end of each day. Day one came out to about 168 US dollars for our family of five, with accommodation being our largest expense at $63.97. You can find a detailed day-by-day -day and category breakdown in our guidebook. Speaking of which, let's talk about our sponsor. Us! That's right, today we're our own sponsors. 
Did you know we wrote our own guidebook? Yeah, we may be a little bit crazy, but we decided to write a whole guidebook about our trip to Taipei. This is all about world schooling, including our entire eight day detailed itinerary full of fun facts, full budget and detailed balance sheet of all of our expenses, teachable moments to help world school your own children, and even journal prompts to help get yourself and your kids started journaling. We're actually filming this segment in Chiang Mai, and we just got our first author's proof. Um, we're really, really super happy with it. It's awesome. So we're really hoping that this is the first book in what becomes a really long series of guidebooks of all of our destinations. So you can get the physical book on Amazon today, like this one, or an ebook version. Awesome. On to day two. Bye from Chiang Mai. Hey, does that mean we're doing a Northern Thailand book in series? Yeah, it's our first day in Taiwan, and last night we ate an amazing dinner. It was so good. And now we are going on the tour today, and I think it's going to be so much fun. Good morning. All right, day one, Taiwan. I guess day one is kind of like day two, but we got here last night. Did a little bit of exploring around the Zenmin area. But today we're going on a tour with Edison Tours. I can't wait. This is going to be so much fun. I don't know exactly what we're doing. I've looked at the itinerary, but I've already forgotten every single thing it is. But you're going to find out as we find out. Let's go explore. And also we got to do fun stuff today. Let's go this way. All right. You know what we didn't get? The stroller. Okay. Can you go grab it real quick? I mean, yeah, no, we I'll, will. I'll just teach you after yeah. the bus. Okay, let's go. Let's go. So, are you excited? We are. <laughs> After that little hiccup this morning, we're on the bus, heading to the actual meeting location to join up with the rest of our tour group. Now, usually with Edison Tours, you'd have to make your own way to a meeting point. But since they're partnering with us on this trip, they've kindly offered to pick us up right at our Airbnb. Uh, quickly introduce myself. My name is Kiara. So I'll be your tour guide for today. All right. Uh, so thank you for choosing Edison Tours. All right. All three young ladies, what would you like to see? I want to see a princess. In the National Pass Museum, we can uh, see a princess <laughs> 1,200 years ago. Whoa. Right. That, was, that was before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we are on the bus now, and we're waiting on six other people to join us, and then we'll start the tour. It's about eight hours long, and it should be a good day. It should be pretty packed, but uh, I think we're ready. I can't wait to see the 2,000-year-old princess. While waiting at the meeting spot, our guide Kiara warns us about Taipei's frequent afternoon summer showers. Not wanting to be caught unprepared, Lindsay heads across the street to a 7-Eleven for snacks and a couple of umbrellas. On the road, we go through introductions, getting to know our tour mates as we head to our first stop, the Grand Hotel. As we approach the Grand Hotel, it comes into view perched majestically on a hill surrounded by lush greenery. It's our first glimpse of how Taipei seamlessly blends urban development with natural beauty, a theme we'll encounter throughout this trip. Built in 1952, the Grand Hotel is a stunning example of traditional Chinese architecture. Its distinctive red columns and golden roof make it an unmistakable Taipei landmark. Over the years, this 14-story palace has welcomed countless world leaders and celebrities, serving as a symbol of Taiwan's hospitality. We know that there are more than 300,000 dragons inside. Wait, there's a dragon there? 300,000. That's so big. That's where we're going? Yeah. Is that the hotel? That's the big, or is that a temple? Yeah, it's a hotel. We're not saying this. All right, so we're at the Grand Hotel, and it was built by a former president to host important people around the world. It's really awesome here. As we explore the Grand Hotel, it's important to remember that this is still a functioning hotel with guests. Our guide points out a wall of photos showcasing the hotel's impressive guest list over the years. But the real stars of the show are the dragons, supposedly over 300,000 of them depicted throughout the hotel's artwork. The girls are particularly drawn to an ornate golden dragon fountain. Its craftsmanship is truly remarkable. These lotus flower carvings are lit from within. 
I don't know how that works. I don't know if they're glass or what. That's awesome. They look like the marble. I think they must be glass. Exiting through the famous front glass doors, we later learned they hold a secret. Hidden in the decorative pattern are six ancient Chinese characters meaning, long live the Republic of China. It's a small detail that speaks volumes about Taiwan's history. We're gonna go back to the bus. So the Grand Hotel Taipei is beautiful. If you're in Taipei, you definitely should come check it out. I mean, come on, look at it. That's amazing. That's so cool. Wow. I'd like to stay in one of those rooms. The view from there has got to be incredible. The room views here are indeed spectacular, but at 588 US dollars per night, it's quite a jump from our $62 a night Airbnb in Ximending. However, if you are tempted to splurge here, or book any hotel for that matter, consider using our hotels.com link. It costs you nothing extra, but it might earn us a small commission. After getting some photos out in front of the hotel, we gratefully retreat to our air-conditioned bus, ready for the next stop. The National Palace Museum. The entrance fee to the museum is included with our tour, but if you're exploring solo today, the adult ticket price is 350 Taiwanese dollars, or about 11 US dollars, with free entry for children 17 and under. The National Palace Museum houses the world's largest collection of priceless Chinese treasures. Most of its over 600,000 art objects were once part of the Chinese Imperial Collection, carefully preserved by generations of emperors in the Forbidden City in Beijing. This is the National Treasure section, so there's a lot of these treasures. Um, one of the big ones is the Jadeite Cabbage, but unfortunately it's on loan to another museum, so all we get is a picture of it. Along with the Jadeite Cabbage, another highlight is the meat-shaped stone, a piece of nearly naturally occurring jasper stone that resembles a popular cut of pork belly served in Taiwan. Uh, the shape is totally natural, but only the art of craftsman only dyed the surface a little bit to make it more like the marinated pork and also poke some uh, holes on the top, okay, to make the surface more like the pork. Right. Definitely looks like meat. In the fall of 1948, as the Communist Party of China gained ground in the Chinese Communist Revolution, museum directors, fearing the priceless artifacts in Beijing might be destroyed, decided to relocate the collection to Taiwan. By December of that year, over 500 containers were shipped via naval vessel to Taiwan. By January of the following year, more than 5,000 containers, cool. representing over 5,000 years of Chinese history, were safely relocated and now housed in the National Palace Museum in Taipei. Continue through the museum, room after room, exhibit after exhibit, from light shows and interactive displays to ancient ivory collections. It never seems to end. You could spend your whole week in Taipei in this one museum and still not see it all. But it's nearly time to go. We just have one more area that's a must for families. Okay, that's the National Palace Museum. Oh, Children's Gallery, very cool. Like a kid's zone area right in front. Fun day, hard to film uh, museums, but uh, we'll show a couple clips and everything. You should come, it's really neat. I would probably recommend a tour though, because we wouldn't have known half the stuff we were looking at and so much information. Like, kind of one of the most fascinating things is that this is like China's history as well. It's like, it's like if you went to the capital of another country, like you went to Bangkok, you're gonna learn all about Thailand history. Well, you're learning about Chinese history in Taiwan because it's like the capital of China, I guess. Anyway, very cool, highly recommend it. Highly recommend getting a guide though. 
of the museum, we noticed a stamp station at the exit. Luckily, we brought the girls' journals today. Nice. They had a great time stamping, coloring, and writing about their experience, making for a fun and educational addition to their journals. You'll find these stamping stations all over Taipei, so it's a good idea to always have the kids' journals with you. Okay, that was the National Palace Museum, and now we're gonna go get back on the bus and head to the next thing. Hopefully it's lunch, because we're getting hungry. Okay, this is Dihua Street, and it's like a walking street, lots of shopping, so lots good. of food, smells delicious. So that spray, probably shouldn't have sprayed on my kids. I should have sprayed it on me first only because it's like an icy hot. So now the back of our necks are stinging <laughs> and the tops of our hands. Whoops. How you, how you girls feel about that spray? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> This is cool. I love a market like this. Active food markets. It smells so good. Oh my god. I wish like we could stop and eat right now, but we might have to come back here. This is kind of a popular street anyway. And it's awesome. I love it. It's reminding me of being in Southeast Asia again. So she said these things up here, they're fried sticky rice. And you give them to babies when they're born. Sticky rice, a chicken, and two eggs. And if it's a girl, no chicken. This temple, the main god is a city god. Okay, we can consider city god as a god of underworld, the mayor of underworld. So whenever there is a new Taipei city mayor elected, he or she will come here to worship the god of uh, a city god. Okay? It's really hot. It's really hot. Just wait. Blow on it. After a quick stop at the city god temple, we were offered some blessed tea. It's a blend of red dates and wolf berries, supposedly good for your health. And they say it makes women more attractive. I'm not sure about all that, but hey, the tea was surprisingly delicious. And coming from someone who usually thinks tea tastes like brown dirt water, that's pretty high praise. That's good. It's cute, right? Holy cow. Okay. It tastes good, mommy. Really good. Really good. Tastes good? Yeah. Mommy. Is that good? Is that good? Yeah. It's really good. That's really good. Yeah, I want to put it in the tray. Just put it in the tray. Just put it in the tray. Just put one of them. Oh, that's good. And the Yuma Street is like Wall Street in Taiwan. Okay, the prosperity of the golden age of the Yuma Street. Yuma Street is one of the oldest streets in Taipei. Once the trading center of the city, it's now full of markets and shops specializing in tea and delicacies. We have a bit of free time from the group here, so we continue exploring and snagging some free samples along the way. Thank you. Go to Family Mart and get some more snacks, I think. We also make a quick pit stop at Family Mart to stock up on water and snacks. When traveling with kids, you can never have too many snacks. A short bus ride takes us to our next stop, Chang'in Gate, also known as the North Gate. Okay, this is the North Gate, and there's actually four of them around the city. This is the only one that wasn't renovated, so the other three look different, because there used to be elevated highways that ran right next to it. Like, it was right next to it. But yeah, there it is. It's pretty cool, right? Taipei was once surrounded by a wall with several gates. While the wall was removed and all the other gates were heavily renovated over the years, the North Gate remained largely untouched. However, its survival wasn't always certain. In the mid 20th century, there were plans to demolish the gate to make way for an elevated highway. Fortunately, it was saved from destruction at the last moment. For decades afterward, the gate stood awkwardly beside the highway, caught between preservation and progress. Recently, the city made a significant change. The highway was torn down, allowing the North Gate to stand alone once again. Now it remains as the only gate in the original style, a unique survivor of Taipei's architectural history. The North Gate sits at the edge of Ximending, so naturally we head into the vibrant walking district next. We got a taste of it last night, but it's great to hear some insider tips from our guide Kiara. Taking her advice, we decided to try a noodle and rice place she recommended. 
It's a perfect spot to grab some beers and take a breather midday. So the tour has been awesome. I think the girls have loved it too. I think it's good for kids and I think that they've learned a lot. And can we get uh, two beer? Taiwan. Um, Taiwan beer. Shishi. So we're trying to get used to the language here. I keep wanting to say arigato. And anyway, it's always hard to flip that switch. Yeah. I think we're gonna eat. We don't like to film ourselves eating, so see you after lunch. So we got these pins the other day, um, and you can pick whatever color you want, and you can also change them out. And they're really cool. And we went to the museum and we got these stamps. Cheers. 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 It's good. Oh, it's good. like fruity. It smells amazing. After lunch, we hop back on the bus and head to Longshan Temple. Okay, we're at Longshan Temple now. It's one of the temples in the city. Ah, it's a long day, but this one's supposed to be pretty cool. Kiara introduces us to the fascinating ways people communicate with the gods here. So a lot of people are here, okay, worshiping the Guayin Buddha. Uh, have you ever seen the incense stick? Incense stick, yes? Mm -hmm. That's the first way. So we just hold the incense stick, it's just like Wi-Fi, just connect us to the god, okay? At Longshan Temple, they use a different method. Moonbot. With this, you can talk to the god with a yes or no question. You start by stating your name, birthday, and where you're from, then you ask the god a yes or no question and throw the blocks. There are three possible outcomes. One block flat side up and one round side up means yes. This is the most favorable answer. Both round sides up is a no. And if both are flat sides up, this is the laughing gods. So that means you're asking a silly question and the god asks you to rephrase and ask again. That's the yes. That's a yes. I want to be a As we explore the temple, Kiara explains that Longshan has many different gods to worship and pray to. Their popularity can change with the seasons and societal needs. For instance, the god of education and learning sees a spike in visitors during exam season. The fertility god becomes a hot spot in the early months of the year of the dragon, as many Chinese believe having a baby in this year brings great fortune. It's incredible to not just witness these cultural practices, but to actually participate in them as well. Having a knowledgeable guide like Kiara really enriches the experience, allowing us to fully immerse ourselves in these traditions rather than just observing them from the sidelines. One of the things the girls were really excited about before we took this tour was seeing the changing of the guard. Now we're heading to Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall to witness the ceremony. As we approach, the scale of the structure is pretty unbelievable. A white stone building with a blue roof dominates our view. There are 89 steps reaching the main platform, each supposed to represent a year of Chiang Kai-shek's life. Chiang Kai-shek played a pivotal role in modern Chinese history. He led the Nationalist Party, known as the KMT, and governed mainly in China for over two decades. However, in 1949, his government was overthrown by the Chinese Communist Party. Chiang and his supporters then retreated to Taiwan, where he continued to lead the Republic of China until his death in 1975. Okay, we just made it to the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. And I think this is where they're gonna do the changing of the guard. But look at this thing, it's massive. Um, we don't have to go up those steps, I heard. Uh, there's an elevator. But Chiang Kai-shek passed away at the age of 89, apparently. So there's 89 steps. So if you do want to get some more steps in on your long tour, go on and run up those bad boys. Yeah. Our guy did say it rains almost every afternoon too, so. Make sure you have an umbrella with you at all times. And the sky definitely looks like it's going to rain. So we have two umbrellas for five of us. Yeah. 
see. Okay, we're sitting here where all these barricades are going to be. Um, she said that in two minutes they're going to put the barricades up, and this is the best spot. So now we're standing here waiting. As with many political figures, Chiang Kai-shek's legacy in Taiwan is complex and often debated. Some view him as a symbol of resilience, attributing Taiwan's economic success and its stance against communist rule to his leadership. Others remember his time as a period of authoritarian control marked by political repression. This split in opinion shows how historical perspectives can change over time, something we're seeing happen in our home country as well. On our way to see the tower, Kiara shares an interesting tidbit about why Taipei 101 has 101 floors. Turns out, it's 101 floors simply because, well, it is. During planning, they kept increasing the number of floors. And when they reached 99, they thought, we can't be just shy of 100. So then at 100, they decided they didn't want to be just 100, they wanted to be over 100. So, 101 it became. There are now many stories about its symbolism, but I suspect most of these were crafted to fit the 101 floors rather than the other way around. Okay, we just made it to our final stop, Taipei 101. And this thing is awesome. I have heard about this since I was a kid and it used to be the tallest building in the world. I was obsessed with it. And look, there it is. Look at this, and this is, what's going on? <laughs> But yeah, there it is right there. Taipei 101. How cool is that? I don't know if we're going to go up to the top of it. We're definitely not doing it tonight, but it's really expensive to go to the top of it. And I mean, come on. The view is from down here. That's what you want to see. You can't see that building from up there, but we'll see. Let's go inside where it's air conditioned. This tour is almost done. We're going to go home, get showered, get something to eat. We might do soup dumplings. I don't know, but we'll see y'all tomorrow. We spend some time exploring the mall and the grounds around the tower before it's time to head back to our drop-off points. Another nice thing about Edison Tours is that they give you the option for drop-off location. You can choose between the MRT station where we started or the Rojas Street Night Market. We had plans to visit the market later this week, and after yesterday's travel day and today's big tour, we were pretty wiped out. So we opted to skip the market tonight. We said goodbye to our tour mates and suddenly we were the only ones left on the bus. Our driver and Kiara were kind enough to drop us off right at our Airbnb. A gesture we really appreciated after such a full day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a really great day. Can you go say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Taiwan. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> it was a great day. And uh, we don't usually do the tours because it's usually a little pricey. And while we didn't pay for this one, thank you, Edison, for providing the tour for us. This is what it would have cost us had we gone on it. So we will go ahead and include it in our daily budget. But it was an awesome experience, and if you can do it, I would recommend it. It was a great time. Love you, bye. See you tomorrow. Please check bye. them out. We have all of their information in our description. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right. Harper. Hey. Say bye. Say bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Day two's itinerary tops out at almost 550 US dollars for our family of five. The Edison tour makes up the largest portion at 352 bucks, covering a full day of sightseeing with a private guide. 
Food costs were higher today, too, as we opted for sit-down meals instead of street food. Remember, you can find all the details in our guidebook. And that's just the beginning of our Taipei adventure. Coming up, we'll venture beyond the city limits to explore stunning geological wonders, ride a gondola over lush tea plantations, and dive into the vibrant world of Taiwanese night markets. We'll cook up some local delicacies, get up close with incredible wildlife, and uncover the rich history that makes Taiwan so unique. So stick around. Our family's world schooling journey through Taipei is just getting started.